هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos on esti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karis amenos. Well, good morning everybody. Yeah. It's time for another segment of the BTS vlog. And as I said before, it's not always morning when I'm doing this, this segment here, so, um, but in this case, it is morning. <laughs> Uh, it is 5 hours and 28 minutes into the day of Tuesday, May 13th, 2014. Uh, my days end up getting screwed up quite a bit because my, my sleep schedule does rotate like this. It, this is 4 hours later than I, uh, than I did yesterday. So, uh, but it wasn't that... Uh, my sleep, it wasn't that when my sleep was sort of normal, it was, again, it's, I'm in a, a, a uh, pattern where my sleep is broken up, so, uh, we'll see what happens in terms of where my sleep goes for tomorrow, where, where I'm up again tomorrow, or, or I'm asleep, or whatever, uh, <laughs> I'll have to sort of, that will sort of come as, as I go through things. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a lot of the um part right now because I'm trying to think of what to say. My mind is still a little groggy, so that's one thing that can be said. This is a my mind is a little off right now. And if you're wondering about freeganism and freegan and being a freegan, it, it, I, I've had other questions and other questions were posed to me in its comments. Uh, some uh, more a larger chunk of the stuff comes off the. Uh, 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 it's not on uh, the videos themselves, but off the videos. And wondering about the freaking lifestyle and, again, how to get started. And I said, well, there is, in, this is, I'm going to repeat myself and say this, you know, one more time. Well, not one more time, but, you know. Uh, and I think because it is necessary there are people who are watching who maybe have seen this for the first time. So, uh, things, in many cases, do bear repeating just for, to refresh and to inform those who are new, who may not have uh, heard the first time. So, anyways, freeganism is the uh, I call it. The, the, it's it's the is basically uh, from the from from my perspective, it's bringing the hodio, the village lifestyle of uh, the old country Greeks and most of the Asians, into the city. Uh, most of the Greeks that I know who are come from these old villages, the, in the villages called the Horyo, and they're very much like the uh, uh, the uh, Chinese and the Asians that are around me who are all immigrants. They're all very self-sufficient people. They don't expect anything from the government. As a matter of fact, they want the government out of their lives. Simply because these people are self-sufficient, they don't want government intrusion in there, and uh, so they, as much as possible, try to stand as independent from the government as possible. You know, that, that, that's where they are. In order to do this, they're not out there looking for billions of dollars uh, in terms of what they're going to make. Their first goal is, am I self-sufficient? Can I put food on the table? Can I uh, give myself a house? Can I uh, uh, put uh, uh, clothes on my back and my family's back if they have a family? You know, this is their priority. And then everything else comes after that. And... When they're so sufficient, it's not. It's not a. They don't take spending money lightly. Lightly, they try. It, it, if you can get something for cheap, for inexpensive, and it functions, you see exactly the same way that if you spent a lot of money on, then that's what you do. You don't buy things for style. You don't buy things for show. You buy things based on functionality. I'll give an example. Um. I bought 
I get my um, my my iPad, my smart pads, the, uh, the the tablets. I get my tablets at uh, for about between eighty and ninety dollars. I get them refurbished. I get them on um, significant discount, and the re end result is that uh, instead of spending three four hundred dollars on the latest and greatest. I have something that is functional, that gets the job done that needs to be done. And now I also have something more because rather than having one device, and this is uh, people who, uh, who work on, 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 smart on these new smart computers, who work on these supercomputers, know that rather than going with the latest and greatest processor, what you do is you take some of th something that's a little less powerful, you link them together and have the, all these computers run as one system. In other words, you create something known as a network uh, or, or more like more off something more relatable to something known as a neural network and the neural network it, it functions like the brain you have a lot of independent parts working together like in the brain each neuron is independent of each other they have interconnection between them and it functions very much like a miniature internet so imagine your brain instead of being one instead of being one large computer being millions of small computers all linked together in a network and that's the functionality of the brain uh, and you could take this overall design of brain of the brain of neurology and transplant that idea into computers and computer science this gives you your what's called the clustering effect this is where you build start building clusters well the beginning part of a cluster is a network even if you have four computers linked together that's your beginning well, now, instead of having one very expensive uh, smart pad or iPad, I have four, uh, uh, I have four tablets, four, four pads, that uh, allow me now to start linking together and start working on building a network, a, a, a neural type network, uh, between the four. That starts out small as a model, and then as the model uh, starts to come together, you start growing that model outwards. And that's, you know, that, that's, and on a budget like that, you can do that, you can do have, you can do and have something like that on a very small budget, because again, you're not going for the most expensive product, you're going for something that's inexpensive, you're cutting your costs, so what was uh, inaccessible to you before, now becomes accessible, because of the, the, that, that sort of, uh, uh, sort of a rearrangement in thought. And this is kind of the way I think the thing you have to do with with freeganism. Freeganism is this readjustment in thought of what you consider to be uh, a value, and how you purchase things uh, when you do have to purchase them. You don't go for the latest and greatest. You go for uh, functionality, and you go for the discount uh, as much as possible. Uh, so in other words, you're not sacrificing. You're not sac You're not in freeganism. You're not sacrificing functionality. It doesn't mean that these things not, aren't functional. You're not sacrificing that. What you're, sac not, what you're sacrificing is you're not going for flash and show. You're going, f the, that, that's not your first priority. Your first priority is functionality. In many cases, when things are expensive, it's, they're expensive because they have a name to them, they're a brand to them. Uh, that's what causes the price to be as expensive. You know, the, the sort of... <clears throat> That's what causes the price to be what it is. So, anyways, I hope that kind of helps uh, for the beginning of freeganism. If you're if you're thinking of starting become a freegan, uh, just pick a point, start thinking about how you spend things, uh, how you spend your money on things, and then uh, from there, try to see what you can do to become more and more self sufficient. And I'll talk about this in. Uh, later segments as well. We'll talk about more about uh, in the kitchen diner. We'll do some things in there. We'll do things in Beauty and the Geek as well, but freeganism. So we have a number of options where we can sort of bring this. Anyways, uh, that's it for this segment. I will talk to you later. <coughs> Well, good morning, everybody. And as I said before, just because I say good morning doesn't necessarily mean that it's morning. It could be technically morning, but, uh, <laughs> but then again, 
Anyways, it's just about 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, actually, 2.20 in the morning. So, that being said, let's get uh, the time and date stamp. It is 2 hours and 19 minutes into the day of Wednesday, May 14th, 2014. That's right. Uh... I decided that I'm uh, sort of thinking about uh, how my days go, and I decided to classify my days into two types of categories, high days and low days. High days, things go pretty much normally, and they go, and they, uh, I, I don't feel fatigued during the day. Low days uh, I usually stack up together, and you see them sort of in hindsight. Right? You don't see them as you're going through them. But through the days, your general feeling is lethargic. It's that you're in slow motion and you feel fatigued. That's you have a general sense of fatigue. And that's what I've been going through the last couple uh, of days. I've been going through this sort of general fatigue. Where uh, actually, it's more than a couple of days, but it's been about a week and a half. I've been going through this uh, sort of lethargic stage, and this is where uh, this is where. The efficiency model that you have, and have developed, if you've developed one, uh, comes into play because it determines how much work you can actually get done during your load days. And uh, what's been happening, if you sort of start following along, you'll see there's an increase in, in work being produced. So even though I'm in, in my load days, uh, the amount of work that's being produced here, the amount of filming, the amount of uh, editing, uh, the amount of research that's being done is actually increasing, not decreasing. And what that means is that my efficiency model, my efficiency, efficiency model is improving. So uh, because the efficiency model is improving and I'm doing more stuff together, uh, that means um, you will start seeing some changes. And as the changes come in, this will eventually mean changes to the BTS log in terms of what's in the content and what's not in the content. Because some of the stuff will be moving out into its own shows. Other content will be sort of staying, or, or not like really staying here, but there will be new content coming in. Other words, this is where you see um, the beginning parts of a show. Where the show hasn't fully formed yet. There's still issues dealing with uh, uh, with the show. Well, and we'll also talk about scheduling issues, other things like that. Other sort of behind the, thing, scenes, behind the scenes things. Uh, but primarily the content that's going to go into a show, if we've got enough content worked out in here, uh, then that means we can go forward, move that content out, move it, to, in, move it into its own show, and you can see that content there. Uh, that's what will be happening, is that you'll be seeing some new shows coming up. Uh, you'll see new content added to Cyborg Alpha TV, so that you'll have a, a, a wider offering of different things. You can choose more of what you like and what you don't like. There is always an overlap because the research is, in many cases, is always integrated with each other. One area does support another area. So it's not as if everything's isolated. It's just that what happens is there's so much to talk about. There's so much to actually, because of the research that's going on here. Uh, there's so much to talk about that you can't keep it all in one thing. You have to spread it out into, into various different categories and typically subject headings. So uh, that's... Uh, what you'll be seeing over the next few weeks, you'll start seeing uh, Cyborg Alpha TV network start to appear more, and we'll start to operate as a network. So, uh, <laughs> and the thing is, is that you'll have more options like like on PBS to different to different to watch different uh, things. But it is like PBS. This is going to be, it's not going to be your average, and this is the way PBS used to be. PBS used to be not your average TV shows. It was for those who are more academically inclined. Uh, it's in many ways the shows were aimed at students who were maybe like maybe for your first year of university. Uh, so maybe say if if you were a freshman in university, uh, that's where the show qualities were aimed, and that's sort of the same thing here is that we're aiming for a first year university uh, sort of standard. That doesn't mean it has to be first year university. It just simply means that's the standard we're aiming for. You could be at any age to watch this channel to watch the. Cyborg Alpha TV is not age restricted, but in terms of the standards, that's where we're in aiming. And, and but in terms of the presentation, but the research, the, but the actual content itself is research oriented. It is cutting edge. It is 
out there on the bleeding edge. And it's done in a manner that we are in full exploration mode. We are doing exploration here. We're asking questions that many cases, other places just simply don't ask. Uh, and that's what you, what you find here is you'll find information here that others won't present to you. So if you want a full range of information, you want not just simply one side, but you want a lot of different sides to things, a lot of information to make a decision, well, this is where you come. And we're hoping to sort of make this as a standard, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's a process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's something that, that takes months, uh, it'll take a couple months to sort of roll out and get working properly. And I said, we're, we're almost at the point where we've got enough content. To depend, this will depend what happens in the next few weeks. Uh, right now, we've got a tentative target uh, set for October to go live. So, <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's kind of a good thing. So, and, then, and this is all this is all my low days. This is what's been happening on my low days. So, <laughs> uh, I'm not too upset that I am in a low day. I'm in sort of in my low uh where I'm in a very sluggish, more fatigue mode. But to understand it, it on, a, on a physiological basis, what I think is happening is that my body is recovering from the winter. The winter is very rough when you go walking, and it is, I do keep it cold in here. My place on average is, it would like in the winter, my place on average is about... Uh, between 60 and 65 degrees. Even right now, right now I, it's uh, dressed like this. It's between 60 and 65 degrees. I don't keep the temperature very high here, so that it does suck a lot of energy from the body. The body does have to uh, uh, work, but when the weather starts to warm up, the body stops working and starts to rebuild itself. And so this is kind of where the mold that I'm in. The body is starting to rebuild itself, and as the body starts to repair, it, the body needs more sleep. And so the fatigue levels go up naturally because the body wants more sleep because it says, hey, we've been working all winter. We have been working full speed all winter. It's now starting to warm up. It's time to start, sh start shutting down and, and working on repairs. And this will t tell the, bo the body, tells the brain, produce the uh, chemicals, the, the neurological chemicals, um, needed to relax the body, to relax the muscles, to pull the tension back. And that way you don't have you don't have as much adrenaline running through your system and you start feeling the fatigue. But if you can, if your efficiency model is good enough, you don't have to worry about it because the work is getting done anyway. So <laughs> um, we will see you. There'll be more uploads this week. So I will see you uh, Probably tomorrow for another vlog. I will probably only be vlogging once a day from now on because there is more content coming out. Alright, take it easy. Bye bye. Well, it's just about, uh, I think 10.30. In the morning, it's uh, May 14th. Yeah, so let's see. T time and date stamp 10 hours and 30 minutes into the day of Wednesday, May 14th, 2014. I'm finally getting the hang of doing the time and date stamp based on what I see right before I leave. And so that kind of works out a little bit now. I'm gonna work on this a little bit more, but uh, I was surprised. I was watching the video of my other vlogs, particularly when it was windy out, and the microphone seems to be pretty good at picking things up. I just have to sort of be careful with the camera and make sure that the lens is pointing at the right place so that my face doesn't get too dark, particularly when it's overcast or I'm wearing a hat or something along those lines. So, anyways, I'm off to do my food shopping. There's a fair amount to get done. Particularly, uh, since I'm changing over my, my, my menu. Every once in a while, I change my menu up for the kitchen diner. 
and so one of the purposes of the shopping trip is to go figure out what's going to be on the menu for the summer so I'm planning the summer menu now and I hope to uh, I don't really know exactly what I want for the summer I'm thinking maybe some apple pie something like that so uh, but the thing is I'm not gonna be buying the apple pies I'm gonna be making them so but uh, I gotta sort of look around see what my options are and sort of think about what I want on the menu so that's gonna be part of the uh, the expedition for today uh, I'm not gonna be stopping off at the department store at all uh, to see what's terrible that was to see what's there uh, for cheap right now for the next two months I'm gonna be on a rather restricted budget and I try to have to get to see to sort of uh, bring down my costs a little bit for the next two three months uh, that has to do with the fact that uh, I did a lot of upgrades uh, February uh, it was no it was, uh, I did it upgrades I did upgrades in February I did upgrades in March and April so that means I have to be conservative for the next two three months and with my finances and that will allow me to go into the next uh, upgrade period with uh, uh, a good amount of uh, uh, financial space <laughs> if you want to put it that way uh, anyways we're coming to the end of the street so this is where I have to cut, sort of cut off and uh, I'll talk to you once I cross the street all right see you then all right well I've crossed the street and so now we're uh, walking down the side road this is actually uh, not a road itself <laughs> It's technically not a road. It is and it isn't a road. This is uh, uh, IBM's driveway. That's IBM right there. That's boss the parking lot. So <laughs> that's where I am here. This is IBM's nice little driveway. <sighs> anyway, I was walking and thinking because that's kind of what I do. Uh, one of the reasons why I do like to walk is you get the mall things over, get the mall ideas over in your head and as you do so you come to conclusions and I was looking at the amount of work I've been doing in the uh, kitchen diner in the functionality of the kitchen the functionality of the kitchen diner uh, and decided that uh, uh, I'm gonna be looking at pork prices uh, because I'm going to be doing pork sausages as part of the summer menu now I'm not gonna be doing the links what I'm going to be doing is making loaves of pork sa sausage and then thinly slicing it with a deli slicer for cold cuts. So that's, uh, rather than buying cold cuts, I found it actually cheaper to make cold cuts. So that's how I'm going to go about sort of filling up some of the summer menu. And I think the rest of the menu is either going to probably be pork and maybe chicken. I haven't actually decided yet, but it, uh, that's kind of where I'm uh, uh, leaning towards right now. And the bizarre thing is that I thought it's, well, it's cooler in my place than it is outside. And the uh, result is sometimes it's difficult to gauge uh, what it's like outside in terms of the temperature. And I think I've kind of overdressed. So now that as I'm walking, I'm starting to heat up. I gotta uh, probably at the store take off some layers. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, the, sun's, the sun is coming out. So that's a good thing. Anyways, uh, I think I've said everything I need to say right now. Anyways, anyways the things I can think of. And I'm coming to another point where I have to be careful with cars coming, so I will see you in a bit. Uh, I'm done shopping. And one thing I noticed is that uh, when it's hot out, 
it really takes a lot more energy to do things. If it's cold road and you're tired, because it's kind of the end of the day for me, I've been going since about 2, 2.30 in the morning. Then what ends up happening is that uh, when it's cold out, you can do, it, the coldness keeps you awake. But if it's warm out and you're hot, and particularly overheating, I've taken a layer of jacket, I took an extra layer off. If you're overheating, what ends up happening is that uh, it literally sucks energy from your body. So you have a harder time uh, doing things that you would normally do when it was colder out. You have a more difficult time doing it when it's warmer out. So in other words, it taxes the body more. And that's certainly what I've noticed here. And I got what I needed. One of the things I was looking for was this big strainer. It's a little metal, metal strainer. You put a, uh, uh, a, a, a little paper towel over it. And it acts as a great filter if you want to do things like iced tea. See, when I do my iced teas, I use uh, loose leaf teas. I don't actually have bag tea. I use the uh, leaf tea. Then it needs to be filtered. Going through a small filter, it didn't work out that well. It just took up a lot of time. So I've got a new filtering system now in my backpack. And again, it's one of those uh, uh, sort of <laughs> take odd components here and there and put them together and they work type of things. Sort of a hack. And what this hack should do, and I've tested it out and it does do this, is filter a much larger volume of liquid than if you were using simply a funnel cone and a filter on it. So uh, uh, then that means this week I'll be making iced tea and my drink will change from fruit punch to iced tea. So that should be an interesting uh, mix for the, for the summer. I mean I do like, I really do like iced tea. I haven't, haven't had it had, since last year. So now Summertime again, it's time to make iced tea. So, anyways, we're coming to the street where I have to cross. And probably after that, I won't vlog anymore because, well, a lot more people are around. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. And this bag's getting heavy. All right, bye bye. A very quick vlog. I'm sure, this is going right. Yeah, I mean, always making sure it's going right. A very quick vlog. Because uh, I noticed um, past the uh, department store, um, on my way back, I'm in the on side street. Uh, uh, fortunately, there's enough wind here that things are cooler, but the heat is really sucking the energy out of me. And I'm fatigued to the point where I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes open. So, that's kind of where we are now. Uh, when I get back, I have to unpack, have something to eat, then I'll probably end up going to bed for a bit, and then uh, seeing how long I end up, stay sleep, I end up stay sleep, staying s sleeping. Yeah. Kind of messed up here, but anyways. How I usually hold this, hold this kind of messes up, and there's a little uh, uh, plastic or metal piece that kind of rubs up against the camera. It kind of swamps the sound sensor. That's right there, and well, you hear a large knocking. Anyways, I'm gonna cut out for now. I will see you probably for the morning vlog. All right, take it easy.
I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say, can you see? Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.